pretty ugly logs, pretty crooked <laughs> and pretty small. However, we're going to make some trim out of them today. I've got my mill warmed up and I put a blade on fairly recently. I don't think there's, there wouldn't be a hundred board feet on it probably. So I'm ready now to, uh, to mill this poplar. These are all poplar logs that a gentleman took off of his own lot. And instead of me stickering and stacking them here in the ground and letting him pick them up, he just dropped his pickup truck off and I'm going to load the pickup truck with the, with the lumber. And I think that's the easiest way for me and definitely the most uh, responsible use of my time so I don't have to sticker and stack and move stuff two or three or four times. Um, and he doesn't have to deal with it. He can back his truck right up to his garage and he's going to stack this stuff. So I'm going to make five quarter and four quarter, which is one inch and one and a quarter inch stock for window sills, window trim. I've already done, I think about 15 logs for them. There's 13 left. They're pretty crooked, I'm not gonna get. This is definitely the, the worst of the pile. I've uh, milled some maple for them for some trim, for some thresholds, for some baseboard, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna uh, mill the rest of this poplar out and see if I can't make something that uh, makes it look a little nicer. Um, than just stuff that was laying around his yard. This was all wood that, not even good for firewood, but he had, he's building a new house. And this is stuff that came from trees that came from clearing the lot where the house is actually being built. So there's a bit of a sentimental value. Not a lot of dollar value in these trees, but I went with my tractor and my little log loading trailer and I fetched them out of the woods all around the place there's property and brought them home. He lives about 15 minutes away from here. So he's a friend of mine that I know from church and uh, I'm gonna mill these up and uh, and get them back to them as quick as I can. Anyway, you may as well follow me around. I'll, uh, I'll just set my camera up here on a tripod and uh, maybe move it around, get some different shots, different angles so you can see how my mind uh, thinks and works around some of these really crooked logs to get the best yield over them. So anyway, let's go.
going to get a lot out of that log. So that was less than 10 minutes. What would you guys do with that upper board? Turn that around so you can see. That all way in the middle, but it's got three, four feet probably on this end. This is a 10 foot log. And it's got, oh, uh, well, maybe two or three feet at the other end. That's clear, that has no bark, no wane. I'm gonna put it in his lumber pile instead of put it in the slab pile. Number one, it's his log. And I'm trying to get as much out of it as I, as I can for him. Um, number two, it's gonna be, uh, something that he can take a little piece for a uh, patch and a little piece of trim maybe um, I'm just thinking if I were to want this lumber it's inch and a half or yeah, inch and a half thick which gives him inch and a quarter 
once he dresses it and he's going to let this dry in his basement and uh, make a makeshift kiln perhaps with some uh, with a dehumidifier but anyway so that gave him four pieces three pieces 10 feet long and a couple of three foot pieces let's say and he'll be able to make some trim out of that a windowsill piece or a, a door header which would be fine you know like the little piece goes along the top piece of trim and it's pretty nice looking lumber poplar mill so nice it's just mills like butter it's soft and it's uh, the knots are soft doesn't have to slow down you can pretty much mill as fast as you want to mill as fast as you can push that that saw through there it'll it'll go i'm just going to show you how my clamps work this is a mill that i've built there's videos i made lots of videos on building this mill years ago but you can go back in the channel and have a look at that if you want but this mill uh, is a 22 horsepower honda power plant it will mill 16 foot 7 long it's a 20 foot track i can add more to it if i need to mill longer but so far i've not been able to or not had the need to i've got three backstops so there's uh this this one right here that's a backstop and then i have another one right there that's down and another one that's there that's down and you'll notice that i i made these little knives up here and welded them on that's actually oh one tool steel that i made and forged them hardened them and then welded them on with a cold water rag around the outside of them so they wouldn't lose their temperature and temper and so far they they've stayed very sharp and very hard and that's what catches the edge of the cant now when i built this mill i turned those all into a Put it ran a string straight string line all the way up the edge of the mill so from every one of these bunks one two three four five six seven bunks which are 30 inches apart from each other each one of those have exactly the same little knife that i made and it's in line with this guide wheel right there focus come on there that guide wheel right there so that is a quarter of an inch on the other side of that so that when I make a square cant up the blade exits with uh, great stability because it's right beside that that um, guide wheel so this is uh, the way that I've got it geared up plus these are only a half inch tall which means that I'll have no fear ever of having my blade touch them and cut them off so I do have a bolt that I adjust on both sides. There's one here. This is what adjusts the bottom of the stop. So this will actually hit right there in the frame when the head goes all the way down. The head slides on two inch square tube all the way up and down up to 27 inches. I can do a 27 inch cut off the bed. I can mill a 36 inch diameter log. It's chain driven. The lift mechanism is chain drive. There's a shaft that runs right clear across with three pillow blocks and when it's all the way down the blade the bottom part of the lowest part of the cutting tooth is exactly one inch off of the deck so all that to say my dogs or my clamps are also half an inch above the deck so that i'd never cut them off no matter what so i have these threaded in place and they just slide slide along they go up all 14 inches or so enough to clamp any log the one in the middle only goes up six inches because I've got framework for the axle that's in the middle there but it's never an issue and this back one here also goes up 14 plus inches all the way to the top same as the backstops backstops also go up 14 inches I don't know if you can hear the machinery running in the background that's mrs. logfather processing firewood today so when I have a lumber order to do she's willing to get some firewood orders tidied up while I'm milling the lumber order. So let's get this loaded in the truck. I just want to show you a little bit about the mill. Um, maybe before I do that, this is a band brake that I've built just with a spring. This is actually off a John Deere mower deck from an old tractor that I used to have. I put a pulley on it, put a belt as a basically a friction tire on the outside. This is a, a band strap that I made out of a piece of a quarter inch steel and just bent it uh, bent it by hand over an anvil and it's what allows the the gears to work these gears here this is a should say on it how many teeth that is i don't remember now it does say there but i don't have my glasses so i'm not going to squint hard enough to see that but this here when i do two full rotations of this pulley equals one inch of lift so it's a pretty good guess to get into that 
um, and there's no effort whatsoever. One hand, one finger, you can lift this up. We got lots of mechanical advantage, lots of sprockets and chains you can see in there. So we got a mechanical advantage here in this chain, and then we have this multiplied again through this chain. So I used to have a motor on this. You can see the the base, the foundation. There's the the guts, I guess, of that motor, an electric motor on that. And the problem with the motor I had is I couldn't get it slow enough to stop when my pointer was actually on the measurement that I wanted it to be at either blow past it going up or blow past it going down and I'd have to adjust it by hand anyway so I ended up taking the motor off and I don't mind it I think someday there'll be hydraulics involved in this mill this is the same motor over there that operates the drive and that motor starting to get a little tired it's got well over 300 hours on it now and a lot of backing and forth and I use uh, it, it's milled a lot of big lumber so it's not getting tired going forward it's getting tired going backwards which surprises me so but I'd like to replace that with a hydraulic motor I'd like to build a hydraulic um, backstops and like to build a log turner that also runs in the same hydraulic so anyway that's a that's a job for a future future time Always bring the mill head back and then put your backstops up and uh, once I get this building built I gotta really remember to put my backstops up because I don't want to have to have my logs falling off the other side I'll have no way to pick them up maybe my log loader be able to reach in there but it, it's just a lot better so don't bother with it by that I mean don't bother knocking them over can you hear how that electric motor is struggling to bring this back now I just use windshield washer fluid for uh, blade lube um, this time of year that way it won't freeze in the summertime I just use water and some soap dish soap but uh, a month ago probably I switched over to windshield washer fluid and that it's a great lube you can add as much as I want I pressurize this tank just with a couple of pumps I have a, a filter on it so it filters whatever debris will inevitably fall in this tank and it doesn't end up in my solenoid this is just a valve to decide how much water I want to put uh, through the system. Right uh, in this, about the center of your screen, you're going to see the throttle open. I'll open the throttle wide open. See that little switch? And that's what activates the blade lube. It's not a pump. What I have is a 12-volt switch. So this, this blue line right here, I'm not sure if you can see where I'm pointing or not. That blue hose is connected to a 12 volt solenoid switch that opens and closes. So whatever pressure I put in this tank will end up uh, coming out that nozzle. So inside command central here, I've just got a few switches is all. I have a manual override so I can, I can press this switch and that allows the head to move in whatever direction I've got that switch set. So all this switch does is forward or reverse. This switch is to turn the motor on or off. That's all that is. And my motors turn that on, back will come. And this fellow right here is my feed speed. So down there is completely off. It can go very, very slow. Very, very slow or very, very fast. Faster than you can walk. And this fellow right here, which has a dead battery, is a digital readout. Uh, and that gives, if somebody needs to have an exact measurement, I can turn this on and I can, uh, I don't know if that'll let me zero, because no, it does. And that will allow me to measure out exactly, let's roll down, so there, seven, 740 thousandths of an inch. So I can repeat that. 740,000, 740,000, so if someone's doing three quarter inch stock, whatever their heart desires for, or take it, try to get it to one inch. Try to get it within 100,000 is fine. 
So there we're at. see the hook in that log now so I'll turn that upside down and uh, take another slice off typically once I do a slab cut I pick a measurement in this case it was uh, ten and a half inches from the deck up I'll flip that upside down and then I'll be able to make a cut usually an inch and a half below that so I'll be able to do a nine inch cut and then I can make a decision about what that log is going to turn into of course I still have to take the hooks and the bellies off of it so not going to be a whole lot left So I've made my backstops are exactly, exactly 90 degrees to the bunk when they're tight. So in this case, what I'm going to want to do is I want to cut the the belly off first, but I want to make sure that my cant, and the cant is what's the square piece that's inside this log after you take the bark off of it. So I put these fellows up and I tighten them up, and that makes 90 degrees here. Always going to be 90 degrees here. Then I take my PV. 
And I'll roll that log, not just once, but I want to roll that right upside down. So I'll take the belly off. And then when I clamp it, when I clamp it to the uh, backstops, I know for sure, 100%, that my camp is going to be square. So I have to raise this fellow up a long ways. So as long as I can't see light of day in the bottom and the top, I know that my camp is 90 degrees. This, this is perpendicular to the next cut. stops at all. Those little knives that I was telling you about, I can bring that square edge of that camp right over to it. And I can build that right down to one inch if I wanted to.
So that's a six by nine inch cant. So that's six by nine inch cant. If we're still trying to get one and a half inch stock out of it, which we'll end up with one and a quarter, we're gonna flip that up on its edge. And that's gonna give us uh, one by six, or one and a half by six all the way down. So we can cut the first one at seven and a half, then the next one at six, and then four and a half, and then three, and then one and a half. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six pieces out of this without any issue. And he'll be able to end up with lots of nice material. Or we can take nine one by sixes out of it if we wanted to. Yeah, nine one by sixes would work as well, but I think we're going to try to go for the one and a half, get the heavier stock first because some of those logs are smaller really is one inch one inch bits out of it.